Right now, we'd like to welcome back to the Reds Room stage uh, somebody you heard from a little bit earlier on tonight here to perform on Reds Room tonight. He is from Oregon. He is a very talented singer-songwriter. We'd like to welcome back to the Reds Room stage right now. Please welcome Dustin Rose. Thanks for having us come back up. Fairest Lord Jesus Wooer of my heart I come to you With a simple prayer Help me love you as you a song off of my first Christian album with Bent Beat Productions. Go Dave Beatty. I don't, I don't know if you're even watching, but um, this is a risk because we just, we, we just threw this in just now, so we'll see how this goes. That song we just sang was off this album, The Overcome. You can find this everywhere you find music and at DustinRose.com. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> you can also find it on um, Spotify and Apple Music and Amazon. Oh, you already said Amazon. Didn't you? And out of the back of our truck. <laughs> we won't sell you a bridge. <laughs> or anything like that, but we'll sell you a CD.
All right, this next song, like I said, is going to be a little bit of a risk, and it might wake you up a little bit after that song. I, I actually, well, I won't get into the story of that last one, but it is on the CD. So, All right, this one's called Have You Heard. It's on the album Catch the Wind, and uh, this ought to be interesting. song for you. Maybe one that you've heard before if you have been around the churches for a while or maybe not but uh, it's a sing along. So in my on this album right here called Overcome, the first song is called Overcome and it talks it asks the question, are you washed in the blood, right? I've been washed in the blood, are you washed in the blood? Well, I decided to finish out the concept of this album I told Dave Beatty, maybe we should end with, Are You Washed in the Blood? It's an old hymn, and if you know it, sing along. Have you 
been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white? Dustin Rose on Resume, everybody. What? Dustin Rose is going to be with us here in just a second. Lots of great stuff here coming up tonight. A little bit later on, on Red's Room, we got Kim Krennic. We got Rebecca Ann Curtis, John Blackstone coming up in just a second. You want to find out more, of course, at redsroom.net. You can watch us on Red's Room Entertainment, the group page, or some casting on there right now. We'll also keep the stream going on Christian Media Spotlight on Facebook.com and on YouTube as well. On our spots, we're keeping it going all night long. Guys, welcome. Thank you very much for blessing us with your uh, appearance, not only on Night of Hope tonight, but also on Red's Room. Um, talk a little bit about uh, some of what you're... Now, we talked a little bit earlier on with some questions during the interview. I don't think we got to this one yet. Who, who has been some of your musical influences <laughs> that have helped shape some of your musical stylings over the years? No, well, mine will take a long time. Okay, so um, I love Keith Green. Oh. I don't know if that... It's, I, okay. And I didn't even get to play the piano today, but um, <laughs> Keith Green was played in my house all the time. We have, I still have some of the vinyl that my parents played. Um, another one that I love, and I, probably nobody here even remembers who he is, is George Beverly Shea. Um, he was the guy who sang with Billy Graham Crusades. Okay. Yeah, very good. Um, and uh, great, great singer. I don't sound anything like him. Not that good, but uh, he was a great voice. Um, I love Amy Grant. I'm not ashamed to say it. She's, she's amazing. Love her. Um, Michael W. Smith. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was the two of them because we're like, hey, that was some of our first concerts, so we might as well. Um, yeah. Uh, there's some other songs, you know, like I, I, 
I'm a very big fan of acoustic guitar, so a lot of the old folk singers or singer-songwriters from the late 60s, early 70s. I won't name drop any of them, but... <laughs> well, uh, our, son's, our son's name is Dylan. <laughs> oh, that's any, is that any, any, any He's not, of, not a good guitar player, no. but that's okay. No. Great songwriter. Um, <laughs> you want to talk about yours? Yeah. Um, C. Gosh, C.C. Winans. Uh, you know, I was a huge... I loved gospel growing up big time, you know, it, just like you said, Amy Grant, Michael W. Smith. And just, um, you know, I grew up, my, in my house, we grew up with a lot of old style country too, Johnny Cash, Dolly Parton, you know, like okay. the, the good old country. <laughs> so, but I mean, I, I've had lots of other influences, but I mean, as far as strong in my heart, Christian artists, okay. CeCe Wendens, and I had the pleasure of seeing her sing at the Dove Awards this year, which was amazing. Thank you, Dave Beatty. <laughs> it was awesome. Okay, so I'm going to ask a different question because, you know, I keep thinking of more questions. So as a songwriter, I get asked this a lot, but so what do you start with, lyrics or music? <laughs> it's different on different – it is a, it is a very common question. Um, it's – on certain songs, it's the, uh, the music. Um, you have an idea, like, have you heard, right? I, I had that – and I don't want to say I was in a trance because it's not quite the right thing. But you get that where you're kind of musical mantra type of thing where you're playing it over and over and over just to try to articulate what is the music saying to me. And um, I had, in that particular song, I had just heard this song, um, speaking of Johnny Cash, the Were You There When They Crucified the Lord? You know, it came up on our playlist or something on one of our iPhones or something. And, and um, I'm like, you know, it was about Easter time when and, and the resurrection was coming and I thought... You know, have you heard um, about the man from Galilee? And so I started writing. So the, the lyrics came second with that song. On other songs, though, I start, I just write a couple of lines and I save it. And then it kind of pair it up later with music. So usually I would say it's probably 70, 30 or 60, 40 music first. Uh, but what about you? <laughs> uh, usually lyrics first. I'm a better lyricist than musician. Um, that seems to cut like lyrics just come to me and then then music follows and I put that to music it's like you know you write some lyrics and then you go okay so what what key do we want to play this in okay you know like how are we going to do what's let's let's think, do a melody line and yep. stuff like that so usually for me I would say it's really high percentage probably 98 percent of the time it's lyrics first yeah Any advice you give for any fellow singer songwriters or worship leaders that are just looking to hone their craft and just be excellent where God has placed them? Yeah. Um, two things. Uh, one is to practice all the time. Um, you you can't. Yeah, you can't. Like my dad used to. Uh oh, my dad used to always tell me there's no such thing as a as a prodigy that just can pick it up and play. You know, I mean, maybe one in a million, but all the people that we see on TV or hear on the radio or on YouTube, those people spent thousands, tens of thousands of hours honing in. Yeah. Um, so I would say keep practicing. And it's the same thing with songwriting. I, for me, it's like if, if, if I keep practicing, exactly. That's exactly the, yeah. Um, and the second thing I would say is... <laughs> I hope my dad's watching this because he's going to take credit for this. But the second thing I would say is, uh, and George Beverly Shea said this, is always be ready. Because at the drop of a hat, they'll say, George, do you have a song? And by the time they had, a, they had the question out, he was in the middle of the first line of the song. Like, he's, okay, hit it, band, you know. And, and he would start singing, bellowing with that, that low voice. But Dustin's grandma used to say, God doesn't, it's not like what you said earlier, God doesn't want your ability, he wants your availability. <laughs> so... He makes you able. Yeah. 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 Is it my turn? Is it my turn? <laughs> oh, my. Um, yeah, I was going to say, following up on that, Joe and I, you know, I, I told him I needed time to practice this week. <laughs> and he was like, why do you need to practice? And I'm like, I need to practice. <laughs> so, like, we went 
like Wednesday and Thursday, I think, without practicing. And then I'm like, I need to practice for the concert on Saturday. So Friday, we had to take time to practice. And then this morning, I practiced. I'm like, yeah, I can't just go like three or four days without practice and like perform. Oh, yeah. I actually practice at my. <laughs> I, I actually, I, I work full time. So I have a day job. And um, I've been doing it for years. I, when I started to learn the guitar, I used to carry my guitar to work and I would play at my lunchtime. And then I would pack my lunch so I could eat while I continued to work. And then I started doing songwriting and stuff. So then I started to practice that stuff. But like, it's been years. I started playing guitar in 2004, started performing in 2006. And I was always like, I'm known as like the guitar lady at work. Cause I'm like carrying my guitar to work every day. <laughs> They've seen me walking in and out of work. So anyway, um, did we do the favorite Bible verse thing? We didn't do the favorite Bible verse. So tell us your favorite Bible verse. I have like three or four, <laughs> but I won't exhaustively. And when these guys are ready, you can boot me. But um, I really like the second chapter of Ephesians. Um, the first, yeah, two, eight, and nine. And then, well, the, really the first, I don't know, what is it, 10 or 12 verses there are amazing. Um, Ephesians in general is, is an amazing, um, amazing letter there. Uh, Colossians. One and two are really high on my list as well. Um, I like the uh, the verse, and I think it's two fourteen. Oh man, I should have. Where it talks about he took our trespasses and nailed them to the cross. I, th I think that's very powerful imagery. And then I would say Isaiah fifty three is one of my favorites as well because it reminds me. Well, I shouldn't say in a positive sense. It's not like oh yay, it gives me warm fuzzies, but it reminds me of what the main thing is. And, to, and, and it's Christ and him crucified. Um, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, he made him who knew no sin to become sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. That's another big one. Um, any verses that point me to the cross and the one who died on the cross are the ones that kind of go, yep, all right, pull me back into keeping the main thing the main thing. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the things that I have for you, says the Lord plans to prosper you and uh, give you a future and a hope. Uh huh. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Those are like my rock. Of course, everything that points me to the cross too, just like Dustin said. But the those two are the ones that get you through the hard times for me. John Blackstone is standing by. We have one final question, though. It's going to be a fun one because I have not dragged this out all night long. I'm going to borrow one from our show. Our audience will be familiar with this. Here we go. If you have a quick story you can, in under a minute that you can share, here it goes. It's the sacred question. Our audience knows exactly where I'm going with this. It goes something like this. Have you had a story, an experience on the road when you're out there touring, performing? Oh, you know where I'm going with now. <laughs> that has either gone unexpectedly right in the best unexpected sort of way, a good moment in that way, or if you had something that has gone unexpectedly wrong in a not so good, almost a fail sort of way, does anything along either one of those lines come to mind? Yeah. So um, I had just been, well, okay, this isn't a brag thing. I had just been um, sponsored by Breedlove Guitars, but they were building the guitar that I had ordered and so it wasn't done, and I had to, oh, my dad's probably watching. <laughs> Do you? Oh yeah, I, I yeah, yeah, I've got quite a, yeah, I love your sound, it's so good. I, I leaned over and I go, man, it sounds so good. I got a couple. Yeah. Do you Yes. I have got a few. So I had this, I had my dad's breed love, because I had officially, you know, put on with, with breed love, which, go breed love, by the way. Uh, anyway, and, and uh, this wasn't their fault. I got up to the, it was actually in Seattle at the Folklife Festival, the Nor uh, okay. Folklife, Folklife Festival. Yeah. yeah, that yeah. one, uh, oh, probably 10 years ago, maybe. And um, I get up there, and I plugged in, and the battery was stone cold dead in my dad's Breed Love guitar. Uh, and the funny thing is, I had just put a new one in, but the new one didn't, it was like dead. So I'm like, Dad, what do I do, you know? And I, so I, I had a friend there who was backing me up. And I said, well, um, Dad, can you take your guitar and <laughs> fix it? And so he's like, what? So he fixed it, and then I ended up borrowing my friend's guitar, which happened to be a breed love as well. So <laughs> I could uh, I fake it till I make it. And then, and then about two or three months later, I got my, my baby uh, custom-built breed love from the magical folks at Breedlove. There you go. Your story? 
I don't, I don't really, uh, the only thing that comes to mind is my horror story is when I was in high school in a musical and I passed oh. out <laughs> oh. during one of the dress rehearsals, but that's the only thing I can think of that comes to mind. Oh, that, that she takes my music career way back. <laughs> yes, I was in the whiz. I played the wicked witch of the West. Yes, I did. Instead of going like, I'll get you, my pretty, it was like, I'll get you, my pretty, because I was in a cast. <laughs> so anyway, that's mine. Well, I have a Breedlove drop story. So the Breedlove that I have, it has a chunk out of the headstock and damage down along the bottom because during a photo shoot for my one CD, I had it flipped over my back and I didn't have like a strap lock on it. Strap popped off. It fell down headstock first and right flat on the strings. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what happened to my one Breedlove. <laughs> this portion of Red's Room is sponsored by Breedlove. Uh, we love you. <laughs> thank you, Dustin. Thank you both for being here with us on Red's Room tonight. It's been great having you with us for both shows tonight. Much continued love and blessings uh, personally and professionally to you guys. And uh, thank you so much for traveling up from Oregon for making the drive to just bless. Uh, hello, family. Shout out if they're watching tonight. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Thank you for making the drive. So such a blessing to have you both here tonight. Dustin Rose, everybody, here on Red's Room.